Hey guys, welcome to day nine. Uh, we're going to continue on with section 8.21 today. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, a brand new kind of number in this lesson. So this is kind of a, a, an exciting lesson in that we're going to learn about a number system that we never knew existed before. And I'll kind of show you where this number comes from uh, using this equation that we see here, x squared plus one equals zero. And uh, we want to solve this equation, x squared plus one equals zero. All right, so in other words, we're trying to find the value of x that we would plug into this thing uh, to make this true. All right, and you're probably thinking, well, I could do that really easy if I just look at the graph and I find the x-intercepts because this thing is set equal to zero. So let's look at the graph real quick. Right? So here's x squared plus one uh, being graphed. Here's the parabola that it makes. And I'm looking at the x-axis here and I'm not seeing any x-intercepts. So this tells me there's a problem that's going on with this equation. I'm not seeing any place where it crosses the x-intercept, so I can't find the solutions on the graph. Okay, well, no problem. We'll just solve it by hand. We'll draw a line and start trying to get x by itself and see if we can figure it out algebraically. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides just to start this off, right? So we subtract 1. The 1's cancel, and we get x squared equals negative 1. So we're kind of thinking what number would we square to get a negative one? Uh, nothing's really coming to mind here, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and square root both sides and see what happens here, right? So the square and the square root cancel each other out, and we get x equals the square root of negative one. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Mr. Walton, you told us a long time ago that we can't square root negative numbers. And you're, you're correct, we can't. We can't square root a negative number. Here's why, right? To square root this number, I would have to find a number that I could multiply by itself to get negative one, right? So I might try one, right? So if I do one times one, well, that gets me one. It's a positive one, not a negative one. So the other option is to try negative one, right? So if I did negative one times negative one, well, that's still a positive one, which is not a negative one, which is why there's no number that I can square to get a negative one. So that would tell me that there are no real solutions to this equation. And uh, up to this point, what we've been doing with equations like this, where we run into this issue is we say, there's no real solutions and we move on. There's nothing we can really do with this thing. But now we're gonna learn about a new number that was invented uh, by an Italian mathematician named Raphael Bombelli. And he invented a number that solves this equation. He literally took this square root of negative one and said, guess what? This is a number. <laughs> All right, and you're probably thinking like, what? Yeah, so he just said square root of negative one is now a number. So he invented a new number and he called this number i. All right, i for imaginary number, okay? Uh, so it's not a real solution. He called it an imaginary solution. And after a few hundred years down the road, we started, instead of calling these imaginary numbers, we call them complex numbers, okay? So this is a complex number. I don't really like the, the description of it being an imaginary number because it suggests that it doesn't exist. These numbers, they do exist. They are used. They're used in applications every single day. Uh, so they're, they're uh, they exist in the sense that we can use them, uh, but you're not going to see them on a number line. You, you, can't, you can't show me the square root of negative one in any physical sense, okay? It's an abstract idea that we use to be able to solve equations like this, all right? And as it turns out, every polynomial equation has solutions, uh, but they might be complex versus being real. Okay, and when we talk about real numbers or real solutions, we're talking about pretty much every number you've ever known uh, up to this point. And now we're adding on these complex things so that we can solve even these types of equations. Okay, so for now, that's about as deep as we need to go into what this is. Just remember, i is a new number, and it's the square root of negative one. And we're going to build off of that idea everything else we need to know. Okay. So let's take a look at what we're going to do first, right? So we start with this. The square root of negative 1 is i. And there's actually a lot of other complex numbers out there. So for instance, if I took the square root of negative 4, okay, this is also a complex number. It's asking us to square root something that's negative. There is no number 
at least no real number that I could square and get a negative four. So two times two is positive four, negative two times negative two is also a positive four. So this is telling me we're gonna need a complex number. To figure out what that complex number is, now they're saying it's two i. Let me show you how they got that, okay? We're gonna take this square root of negative four and I'm gonna rewrite it. I'm gonna write it as the square root of four times negative one, all right? So four times negative one is negative four. And then I can split that up, right? So I can say the square root of four times the square root of negative one. And then I can say, well, the square root of four is two, and the square root of negative one is i, by definition, right? That's what Bombelli said. This is our new number. So the square root of negative four in its complex form is two i. So we can go from square root form to complex form here and get the complex version of that number. Okay, and we can do the same thing over here. So again, we can split this up to be the square root of nine times the times negative one, right? Put that all inside of one square root and then split it up. So I have the square root of nine times the square root of negative one and then evaluate each one separately. So this one becomes a three and the square root of negative one by definition is just i. So the square root of negative nine is three i in its complex form. One more time, let's do the square root of negative two. So I can rewrite this one as the square root of negative one times two, and then split it up a little bit further here, just like that. So this becomes i by definition, and the square root of two doesn't work out to be something nice. It's a never ending decimal, so we'll just leave it as the square root of two. And this is how we would write that. We would say i root two, and that's what we got here. And so that's how they break these numbers down, going from their square root form to their complex form, where we have an i in the final result. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. So how do we handle exponents? Like, let's say I want to take this i thing, and I want to square it. Okay? So i squared. All right? Let's think about, well, we know in its square root form that i is simply the square root of negative 1. And I want to square that. Okay. And we know that the square and the square root cancel each other out, so all that's left is negative 1. So i squared is negative 1, which is by definition what we were looking for. We were looking for a number that we could square and get the number inside of the square root. So if I take i squared, I get my negative 1, which is what I needed to solve that equation. Okay. So i squared, simply negative 1. Well, what if I wanted to take i to the third power? Okay, well, i to the third power can be rewritten as i squared times i, right? i squared times i, much like x squared times x is x to the third, well, i squared times i is also i to the third. Now, we know from the problem that we just did, i squared is negative 1, and, well, i is just i, so we'll say negative 1 times i, so we get negative i. So i to the third is equivalent to just negative i. Okay. Well, let's try it again. This time we'll do i to the fourth. So I'm going to rewrite that as i squared times i squared. Okay. So just much like x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, well, i squared times i squared is i to the fourth. So this is equivalent to i to the fourth. And I know from my previous problem over here, i squared is just negative one. So I could rewrite this as negative one times negative one and negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. We get a positive 1. So i to the fourth is equivalent to positive 1. Okay, well, let's keep going. Let's look at i to the fifth. See what happens there. So I can rewrite i to the fifth as i squared times i squared times i. So I'm just breaking it up using exponents, all right? And we know from the previous problem that i squared is negative 1, so I can say this is going to be negative 1 times negative 1 times i. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1, so I'll just say 1 times i, and 1 times i is just i. So i to the fifth is just i. They're equivalent. And we're back to where we started, right? We started with just i, right? So we went i, negative 1, negative i, 1. Now we're at i. Let's see what happens when we do i to the sixth. So we're going to get i squared 
times i squared times i squared. And we know each of these are going to be a negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So when I multiply these two, I get a positive 1 times negative 1. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, right? which is the uh, same thing that we got when we did i squared. So it's like this is repeating itself. All right. And I'm going to leave you there with that just to kind of think about how the exponents worked and how I did those. But for the discussion today with our lesson, I'm going to ask you to kind of extend on this. Like what would happen if I did i to the seventh, i to the eighth, so forth and so on. Uh, and what we're, what we're kind of noticing here is that there's some kind of repeating pattern that happens with these exponents. And I want you to think about what that repeating pattern is. And we're going to constantly revisit this, this uh, particular concept as we go through the lessons, right? My goal would be to get you to a point where can you predict what i to the 100th power is or i to the 200th power? What would that be? And can we use what we know about these things to figure that out? Okay, so there's exponents of i. And let's take a look now, just some simple uh, simplifying type things that I might ask you to do, and then we'll, we'll uh, stop the lesson for today. All right, so when we run into something like this, this is a complex number in its square root form. So when they want you to simplify something like this, they want you to write it in its i form or its complex form. All right, so remember I showed you that on the previous page. I'm going to take the square root of negative 25 and rewrite it as uh, 25 times negative 1. Okay, so that's a 25 times negative 1. So I'll split that up, square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1. This becomes a 5, and this, by definition, is i. So we just get 5i. So simplifying, going from square root to complex form. All right, with this one, I have two complex numbers, and they are being multiplied by each other, right? So I have 2i times 3i. So I'm going to take the real parts, the 2 and the 3, and I'm going to multiply those first, right? So 2 times 3 is 6. And then I'm going to take the imaginary parts, the i's, and I'm going to multiply those. So I do i times i, which is i squared. And then you might remember from the previous page that i squared was simply negative 1. So this is really just 6 times negative 1 in disguise. And 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, right? So... These are our final answers after we simplify. So instead of writing 2i times 3i, I would write negative 6. Easier. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this one. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got exponents and we've got some multiplication. Uh, so let's start with the exponent. I'm going to square everything in this first parentheses, right? So I do 2 squared, which is 4, and then i squared. And I'll put that back in its parentheses there. And that is being multiplied by negative i okay so i'm going to do the same thing that i did here i'm going to multiply the real parts right the four and the negative five and i'll get negative 20. and then i'll multiply the imaginary parts i squared times i and i'll actually write that out like that okay and then i'm going to start simplifying a little bit more because i remember that i squared is simply negative one right so this is negative 20 times negative 1 times i. And then I can do this real quick. Negative 20 times negative 1 is a positive 20. And we'll say that this is just 20i. That is our simplified version of this. And these are the types of problems that we need to be able to do for right now. We're going to learn how to do more operations with these i's in future lessons. Uh, but I think that's enough for today. A lot of things going on there. So uh, you know, practice the problems that I give you, see if you can make sense of those, and we'll talk more about complex numbers tomorrow. All right, guys, have a great day.